So I welcome you all to this data R on object detection in images using YOLO model. So this is the basic introduction, the table of contents that I would be covering uh, throughout the session. Uh, first, object detection, uh, what the object detection is, the history of object detection, classification, localization, detection of the how they are different to each other. Then I will proceed with the YOLO model, YOLO model, YOLO model architecture, how YOLO model works, what is uh, the YOLO algorithm, how it works. And finally, the practical implementation of the YOLO model in the Python language. So this is just brief about me. I am Dr. Tanu Solangi. I am currently working with Capgemini as a data science manager. I have approximately 10 years of experience and this experience is mixed. Uh, sometimes it is like research oriented and sometimes it is like project development sort of. I have written a Springer book chapters on current technologies like uh, IoT and federated learning and published many research papers also. So to name few, reading and drawing are my hobbies. So let's let's get started with the very highly uh, publicized and highly known YOLO model. So before YOLO model, we must understand what the object detection is because YOLO model has been used for object detection. So object detection is the computer technology that is related to computer vision and image processing. Now it deals with basically localizing a region of interest within that an image and classifying that region. Sometimes you see a single image is there that includes several regions of interest that is pointing out to the different objects. Now, what I mean by this is, suppose you have a picture of some uh, kids playing in a ground. So when you have that picture, there are multiple objects that are being there, like some kids are there, some ball is there, bat is there, racket is there, bag is there, bottle is there. So there are multiple objects out there that is being visible in that particular picture. So these all could be, uh, could be detected at a one go. So why YOLO has play, uh, YOLO has been playing uh, an important role in many applications like surveillance, self-driving cars or robotics, uh, and especially now a time in medical domain also. Uh, we, we can detect multiple things with the medical images uh, and we can predict out uh, that something has been happening. So that is also a wide uh, range of topic that is being currently under research out there. So when we say the history of object detection, so firstly, the first attempt of the object detection has been done in the name of RCNN. And uh, it, it is basically developed by Ross Gilchick in 2014 at the Microsoft Labs with his team. So basically, this is the first starting uh, bounding box for the object detection. This is the starting stone for the object detection. Now, I, I, I just explain you the clear difference between the classification, localization, and detection. These are the three terms which have been coined uh, simultaneously. But what exactly these three means, if you see the first image, that is the image classification. In this image, this, Im this, the classification, what classification does, it defines that there is a car. That is just the image classification thing happen. But when we are putting the bounding box around the car, that is we are specifying the location of the car that is known as localization. But when we are, classifying that object as well as putting the bounding box on those objects that is known as object detection. And there may be multiple images. In the third image, you are able to see only two cars are there, but there may be many, many cars out there on this road that could be detected using object detection. So 
we start our journey for the yolo yolo the full form is you only look once why uh, because here you just pass your image one time you are not passing it a uh, uh, multiple uh, times two times the the earlier object detection models that have been used that used to process the image uh, twice but for yolo you just pass the image once and at one go it is just detecting all the objects and the class probabilities out there so yolo model is a popular object detection as i told earlier why it is because of its speed and its accuracy it was first introduced by joseph redman and his team there are four other people who are there when he wrote this paper in 2016 and after that it has gone several iterations and the latest version that is being available uh, today is yolo version 7 so yolo proposes using an end to end network neural network that makes prediction of bounding boxes and class probabilities at once only both those things have been predicted at one time only that's why yolo is very fast yolo uses convolutional neural network for object detection so this is the architecture i'm not going into detail of this architecture but this is the way yolo model process the image from first point to second third fourth this is the basic layered architecture if you just go through any neural network course where you understand how the neural network has been created these are just the layers that have been created to process the image and give the final resultant image so let's look into detail how yolo is working yolo basically work on three points number first yolo resize the image number second it runs the convolutional neural network number third the threshold detection has been happening so the image has been divided into like these parts see these parts are there that have been passed to the neural network and that has been feed forward to the network and after this this sort of image would be generated where the class has been predicted uh, dog 0.39 person 0.94 with the percentages that is the output of the yolo model now the as we have discussed yolo just apply a single neural network to the full image yolo divides the image just uh, listen to this uh, very carefully what yolo is doing it is dividing the image into regions right first step dividing the image into the regions second one is predicting the bounding boxes and probability for each region it also predict the confidence for each bounding box like presence of an object is there or not whether the object is uh, present or object is absent on the basis of that the confidence has been increased or the confidence has been decreased the bounding boxes are then filtered using nms means non maximum suppressions uh, which exclude all the bounding boxes whose confidence is low or less and keep on uh, keep on increasing the confidence of the bounding box which is showing the good result so in this way we we are going to define detection first step is detection second step is training in detection first is object prediction class prediction then the combination of that and then the prediction of the bounding box has been there and then finally training of this one so let let's get started first step is the residual box basically yolo uses dark net network right in the first step i i told you that it is split the images in the s cross s grids uh, for yolo 19 cross 19 grids is there but in this case you are able to see um, the image has been divided to 7 cross 7 grids why i am saying 7 cross 7 if you go in this direction you are able to see seven boxes are there if you go in this direction you are able to see seven uh, boxes is there so this is seven cross seven if this is uh, if you are able to see four boxes are there four boxes at the down so that would be four cross four and similarly 
so you can divide the image with with whichever grid cells you want to now each grid cell predict b number of bounding boxes with the object probabilities and the class prediction now what b bounding boxes i am explaining i will be explaining in the next slide yolo predict four coordinates for each bounding box bx by bh bw bx and by is the point of the centroid bh and bw is the height and width of the bounding box so our first image is uh, first part is complete we have an image that is provided that is divided into grid cells right now second one in all those grids we identify the grids that has the presence of objects and that would be marked i have marked it here as red that is red here you are able to see car is there so that's why this box this grid is holding the information of the card so it is marked now the next step is to this bounding box a more larger bounding box has been created because it is capturing the image of the car here so how it is happening this is the bounding box for the car this is the x and y that is the centroid position of the object the centroid position of the car x and y that i am saying bx and by is there this is the height and the width of the bounding box height and width of the bounding box right and p object is the probability of the box that is containing an object if the box is containing the object the probability is 1 if it is not containing the object the probability is zero so our first task is to identify all the boxes which have some sort of probability of objects and removing all other boxes which don't have any probability right so in this case if you go above these these all have some sort of probabilities like tree is there and other stuff is there like there is it may be considered as a dining table and other stuff so we we consider that whether it is being connected to some object or not so and c is what is the class is the class means in this case what the class is dog is a class bicycle is a class car is a class so these are the classes out here to so c1 c2 c3 that would be there so at some instant of time it would be identifying like suppose to consider c1 is for car c2 is for bicycle and c3 is for dog so for this box c1 is present right so in that case c1 would be one and again two other would be zero similarly for another case where bicycle is there to so c1 would be zero c2 would be one and c3 would be zero again similarly for dog and so on right in this way because you see the computer don't understand the images that images need to be converted in forms of number in that way it is going to be converted right so as per our last discussion we we increase the confidence of this one and similarly you see there are multiple boxes that have been created throughout the images for the identification of the objects now the one which where we have the strong possibility of the object are highlighted the this is the more black one this is for bis the bicycle this is for dog the the these are more highlighted so we increase the confidence of these uh, bounding box because they have some sort of object being present there that is the first part that is the object part number second is we need to specify it to certain class also object could be uh, there is some presence of object but the class should be the associated class that would be mapped out there so all the bounding boxes would be specified with the classes like for the purple one that holds the strong possibility of the class bicycle green one holds the strong possibility of the class dog orange one holds the possibility of the class 
car and these blue they, they have connected with the possibility of a dining table the this is sort of dining table out there now the second step is to assign the probability how good the class probability is there like for dog it is 0.8 if it is more clearer it would be 0.9 and so on that that in that way the probabilities have been assigned to each class there now the third thing is the combination of the object uh, one that we have achieved uh, as the first step and the second one is the class uh, probabilities out there so we combine both and with the help of that if an object is there and that could be mapped to a class so that combination is being defined out here like green one is for uh, dog that we have assigned earlier purple one is for bicycle and uh, uh, orange one is for a uh, car but for other ones it is very narrow and we we are not able to directly specify to certain class directly out there so that's why the other would be the the probabilities would be decreased for them so this is the final output after the complete set that is happening when we apply the non max separation now now what is what is known as non max separation is suppose uh, as we have discussed in our uh, earlier example there are multiple bounding boxes out there right suppose there is a car and this is the one there could be other bounding boxes uh, associated to this car also now we we can only take one bounding box for one car right so all the other bounding box need to be removed so how they are going to remove they, they are going to remove using non max separation so wherever the maximum value of the car is there so that is taken consideration and other ones would be removed out excluded wherever uh, there is not maximum probability out there that would be uh, eliminated from our system and in that way we are only left with one one bounding box for one particular uh, object but there is another case also but they, there are sometimes uh, centroids have been there and we are not able to uh, perfectly uh, narrow down it to one object one bounding box then we use the anchor boxes out there so i am not going into that i am just uh, sticking myself to this point when you can identify you you are able to use with the non max separation uh, you are able to reduce one particular bounding box for one object out there so this is let's just recap what we have done we we have the original image we divided it to the s cross s grid on the input side we pass it to the model now model does two task one one task is bounding boxes plus confidence that we have seen number second is class probability map now it is combining these two and giving us a final detection of the all the objects there with the class associated to them i hope it makes sense so let's see how we are training again this is the convolution neural network these these are the things that have been coming out from this network and this is the final output that has been generated with this particular network so when we are doing the training suppose the image has been passed we are supposed to train it out now how we are going to do we we just pass the bounding box we just find out the centroid and we just check this this point the right match for this particular point and if this has been defined like suppose dog equal to 1 that has been defined this is the one so what we did we consider the bounding boxes on this there are two bounding boxes out there now what we does we just adjust these bounding box with the, the certain thresholds so we increase the confidence 
of the bounding box which is best fitting the image and decrease the confidence of other bounding box which are not best fitting to the image so we increase the confidence of this and we decrease the confidence of other bounding boxes that are being there right so um i to just put it to a conclusion is yolo is an object detection model that has been used for detecting objects in the image and is incredible computer vision object model that has been used for object detection and classification now yolo works on the detection of the objects the class probability and finally combining it and it is very fast but there are certain issues with yolo also like for very small images it it wouldn't work that fast so if the image is very small so you, you need to check out that whether it is working fast or not and it is it has been able to detect that image properly or not so with this the, this is some references that i have put into like the uh, the original paper the original website of joseph uh, redman if you want to understand how yolo is you need to understand how it process so you can go through this is uh, some web uh, some slides that have been there so i just put those things uh, out there you can go through and read these uh, parts out there to understand in detail how object detection with yolo is working right so uh, before proceeding further if you have a little bit questions to that uh, because after that we will be moving to the python implementation of this so let's see if i am able to answer something uh, yolo version 3 would be covered here sujeet no we are not uh, uh, addressing the text recognition we are just uh, giving you the basic gist how yolo works for the image how image have been detected with the yolo okay so bounding uh, how is bounding box bounding box has been uh, created we we have written a specific code for creation of the bounding box with the help of that we we used to create the bounding box for the images uh bobby yes yolo model is for object detection so uh, kim i uh, basically darknet is a network that has been created out there if you want to go through how it works in detail uh, i have shared that uh, link in the slide you can go there uh, in the joseph redman website and you can read what the darknet is and how it is working in detail yes we can customize data set and train it using yolo uh, in one of my experiment uh, for the project uh, i have customized the data set and trained it uh, to yolo because every time it uh, differs uh, so uh, dinesh uh, let me uh, show you something i i just kept uh, some slides in the back end for the non mex separation Uh, if you are able to see what i am saying one image has been surrounded by multiple bounding boxes if this image is there the green bounding box is there yellow bounding box is there red bounding box is there similarly for dog also there are multiple bounding boxes are there right how to select one bounding box with the probability the 98% probability for this bounding box that is being created and similarly for this one other other bounding box are removed from here we just kept this one similarly for this one uh, 87% 96% 82% 96% is the highest one that is taken and other one that is being removed out there dinesh um, what the ravi kumar dark net uh, yolo uh, it it can detect many objects uh, i i cannot give you the count because i haven't counted how many object it is detecting but it can detect many objects at a time if you are able to see there are very videos that are being running out there where multiple images have been detected in one video only so ravi kumar again the same for you you uh, can go through these uh, slides uh, joseph redman uh, uh, website and you can check out the darknet network 
So Rajkumar, for this, how to understand these YOLO model, you need to do your research a little bit because uh, there are certain issues with the earlier one. There are certain requirements that have been added and for uh, meeting those requirements, the YOLO versions are updated. Yes, definitely we need to label that data set, Prashant. Yes, object is there, but that is not a complete object out there, tree. And even though uh, whether our object, uh, the class, the class that we are taking, whether that object is there or not, that is also an issue. When you train the model, you should have those classes present in your data set. Only then it can detect those. Yes, YOLO model is very good for real-time detection, Prashant. If you have certain problem that is real-time object detection, you can definitely go ahead with the YOLO model. There are many algorithms, uh, alternative algorithms, uh, efficient that D0 is there. Uh, there are other uh, RCNN, faster RCNN. There are many algorithms for object detections. But you need to consider what task you are trying to solve with these uh, object detections algorithm. There is one MG and other uh, tools that are being available for data labeling. You can uh, go through just Google it and uh, check which which tools are good for you, and you can proceed further. Okay, so I think I have answered all questions. Let uh, me proceed with the practical implementation. Right, that is the one that you are looking forward. So what we will be doing. Uh, this is the algorithm that we will be doing. What this algorithm is doing, uh, it is reading the RGB image. That is the first thing. Getting the blob of it. Number third, loading the YOLO version 3 network. Because you need to train your model and you, uh, you are going to train that model using some sort of network out there. Then implementing the forward pass then getting the bounding box someone asked how the bounding box has been created so a bounding box has been defined that has been created with the help of code out there then non maximum separation and lastly uh, we we are drawing the bounding box with the labels labels means the class name that is there the classes with the probabilities out there so uh, you you need to run this code. You first need to install uh, OpenCV uh, Python out there. And uh, we imported NumPy because the image need to be converted in terms of number. And that would be done using the NumPy uh, library. So uh, CV2 is the, uh, is the synonym for OpenCV1. Uh, and time, we want to check how much time it is taking out there. So a uh, first step of ours is to read the input image, right? So this is the part that I have given. These are the image. You can keep many images out there. I, in my folder, I have kept two images just to show you the demo. So this is the image that we are inputting out here. Now this image has been read by the CV2 method I am read and it has been saved into the image BGR because image has been uh, saved with the BGR format out there. Now uh, we want to uh, resize the window size that's why we have kept out here and this is the showing of the image BGR just to check whether the image has been successfully uh, loaded into the system or not. This is the wait key until and unless I don't press anything out there, it, the image wouldn't be destroyed out there. And this is the destroy part, part there, right? So I, I just um, uncheck this checkpoint and just check uh, how we are proceeding further. And this is the uh, for the image, you see the, the image BGR, the shape would be in this format. First is height, uh, width, and the uh, BGR format out there. So first is height and the width. We want to extract height and width because in the later part of the code, we are using height and width. So what we did, uh, we, we take out the shape, slice it out, and uh, take out height and width from there and save it into height and width parameter out there. And this is just to show, this is just to show, 
शो द हाइट एंड वेट हैज बीन डन सक्सेसफुली और नॉट तो आई जस्ट रन द कोड एंड लेट सी वॉट इट इज गिविंग सी दिस इज द original image that we are talking about right and when i click until and unless i don't press any key it is there when i click it this is the blob image you are able to see on the top blob image is there and these are the coordinates for it 416 416 three so that is being there so let's move ahead i just uncomment this one I don't want to see these checkpoints again and again. Is there any other checkpoint that is there? No. Now, second is uh, the blob image. We want to see. Uh, we want to crop the blob image that that is being there. So this is the blob image out there. I just uh, so the second part is uh, what we are doing. We we are checking uh, the image out there. Okay, uh, this is uh, five hundred and fourteen, or this one. The blob image. What we are doing? We are transposing the blob image, and we are showing that. And this is the shape that we are expecting. This is the same thing that we have done on the on the earlier part. So I just run the code. See, this is the original image. I just this is the one. It ran the complete one. i just show you the part we, then we proceed further so this is the network out there right the network the convolution network leaky relu uh, these this is the network out there that i have already saved in yolo coco dataset where the coco names is there uh, the i i just open these coco names for you also just give me a sec so the labeling of the class that i have said earlier already these labels have been there their their weights have been uh, defined so if these uh, classes is there so that is being automatically detected but if you are working on something which is not present in this coco data set then you need to label that and use that right so uh, sandwich orange broccoli pizza laptop refrigerator these all things are present out here and this is the config file this these are the weights for these one that is already being there and we would be using them in our code now i will explain you how the network is so this this is the network out there and we are just focusing on these one out there so this this is the output representation so uh, object detection took this many second and it detected two person person one object one person object two laptop and uh, number of object detected nine and finally uh, the non max suppression took it to two so let's see how it is happening out here i must have commented out there so till this point we are clear right now we we start loading the yolo version 3 network now this this is the one that i have already told you coco names is there if that is there that would be used so we uncomment this it is it is taking the coco data names out there and if you want to see the checkpoints of that let me uncomment this and see how uh, these are there let me comment let me comment these all i'm going step by step so that you understand how the things are moving right so uh, till a part we are okay right now let me also this is the original image i press the button this is the blob image see this is the one it is still running out there this shouldn't be happening okay why it is showing okay ha to uh, uh, the this is the network one let me change the uh, image it is taking the first one also and repeating the stuff sorry actually today my system has been behaving very weirdly from the morning afternoon uh, something has been opening sometime it is uh, closing up so no worries 
So let me explain you uh, how it is working out there. Then we can check uh, how. So uh, this is the one, uh, the blob image has been there where we have specified that. Let's go through the network. We have loaded the network. We have loaded the POCO data set uh, from here. Then we have created the labels out there. This is just the printing of the label names out there. The label names means the labels, the values that is being available there. Then you see the YOLO version three config files and wait files are there. So I'm just uncommenting these to load this to the network. Then the, to get this layer name, all the layers that are being there, that the, that the one that we have shown earlier have been there. This is the checkpoint where we can see the layer names that I have earlier shown. So I, I will be commenting this one. Then what we are doing, we are fetching out the data from the network where YOLO is there, like YOLO 82, YOLO 94, YOLO 106, because we don't want the other layers out there to work. We just want our YOLO layer to be working out there. So we fetched out the data set and it would be giving the output like this. And this is the one that we, we can change with the images. So suppose I, uh, I have kept it like probability minimum is 0.5. That is uh, to eliminate weak prediction. If uh, the probability is less than 0.5, all those um, uh, elements would be uh, deleted out there, would not be considered out there. Now you can increase or decrease it according to your convenience. If your uh, objects are not being detected properly, so you can do that. You can play with this and check the one. Then this is the threshold. This is the threshold for filtering the weak bounding boxes with the non-max suppression. So I have kept it 0.3. You can kept it something else, whichever prediction, whichever value is giving the correct prediction with that. So you can do that. Then this is the colors. We, we are putting the colors out there for uh, for the bounding boxes out there. So that is the colors have been there. Then th these are the type and shape and the colors just to check whether th this has been done correctly or not. This is the YOLO network that has been completed. Then the forward pass because that network has to pass it forward. So what we did, we just uh, set input to the blob image. We are not working on an original image. We, we are working on the blob of that. Then start, uh, this just represent the starting of the time and just represent the ending of the time. And it is the time that has that network took to detect the object. So I just uncomment this all. Then this is this is the like uh, just to printing to check how much time it has been taking. So this is the forward pass uh, implementation out there. Now uh, someone asked me how the bounding boxes are created. So in this with this code we are creating the bounding boxes. So we created the three list bounding box confidence and class number. And what it is doing, it is going in a feed forward manner. I, I just uncomment this and let you explain how it is working. So this is the value one class that has been done on the all the output. Uh, we have taken it in the upward output from the network, the YOLO one other stuff out there. So we have kept it there. Then the detected object has been matched to this result. And if there is a match, we uh, check, take the first five value for, uh, for after five, after five, why I'm saying after five, because if you remember in the PPT, I have explained to you every box bounding box has coordinates, PC, BX, BY, BH, BW, uh, and uh, class one, C1, C2, C3, C4. So if you just count first five are for the bounding box and after five are for classes. So we 
we detected the classes out there whatever the classes values there that that has been taken out and it has been saved to score now whatever the maximum score is there we we are just concerned with the maximum score and we are giving it to the class current out there now that is current score the value has been there and that has been passed to the confidence current so th this is just uh, the checkpoints that we are checking out whether the detected object has some shape or not how it is working now it is the uh, we are eliminating out the weak predictions and the minimum probabilities how we are doing that if the current confidence current is greater than the probability minimum that we have earlier said that you can vary, right? If that is there, so what we are doing, we are detecting objects. Zero to four is what? Zero to four is what your four parameters out there. Your four parameters out there that have been uh, matched with the uh, multiplied with the width height the width uh, height parameter that we have taken in the first uh, one just to uh, define the box current values out there to uh, scale it out further now this is the x center y center box width box height that have i have been saying from the box current you fetched all these values to put it to these values out there now x minimum and y minimum is the uh, a bounding box has been created uh, in this way like uh, a bounding box a box is there to this point the uh, to the left is the x minimum y minimum and this point when we create the rectangle we should have these two positions out there so this is the uh, uh, position for the left point out there x minimum to so x center minus box width by two similarly y minimum uh, y center minus box width by two then bounding boxes you just append all these values to the bounding box the list that we have created earlier similarly uh, append this to the confidence list similarly this to the class numbers this is the non max suppression uh, that we have discussed uh, where it is eliminating the values out there uh, which which are uh, which you are using to uh, we, we just create the this is the non mix suppression bounding box confidence and other stuff out there then these uh, bounding box have been drawn with the label i just uncode this so uh, length of result is greater than zero you just flatten it you just print the object label it to the class number counter one then x minimum y minimum a bounding box position have been there similarly box width uh, if, if you have worked with some computer vision problem you know how to create the bounding box rectangles and other stuff there are multiple images that can be created using this so these, these are the checkpoints. Uh, the rectangle has been created. This is the text box. Uh, the box label has been created with the label names Y minimum. This is the uh, object has been detected and this is the length one. And finally, this, this is the detected image that we have been seeing. This is the this is the final output you are able to see. This is the la laptop with 90% probability. This is the person with 99% probability. In similar way, if there are multiple objects, it can detect multiple objects out there. Let me give you one more example. And let me give you one more example. If there are multiple classes out there, let's have one more part of the file okay it's up the time okay uh, let's let's wait here and if you have any queries let's answer those yes ma'am the queries are there in the uh, q a section only so let me read them yeah so before we proceed to answer your questions i would like to request the attendees to please fill in the poll about the feedback as it helps us to conduct more such sessions so i'm launching the poll right now and uh, this is the one that i would be uh, sharing on my github repo so i am working on the code for video as well as 
uh, for a real time images also so when i would be sharing my link to the github repo uh, there you can just find the other codes also that i would be implementing soon so what you have to do you just clone the github repo in your visual studio account and you just run that that is as simple as it is yeah we can uh, take up the questions ma'am yeah so how can we do in real time so that whatever we are shooting in the video it is displayed to us in real time so mayank for this you need to do some some uh, research on your own because that requires some values basically uh, i can tell you that uh, this is one image that i have taken what happens in video the video is divided into multiple frames that individual frame would be taken care and that is a looped value has been looped on that and object has been identified on that so you need to just go through with the links and other stuff out there that is available and you would be able to easily understand that yolo is not uh, that difficult it is very easy if you just understand the working how it is working you are able to uh, judge so blob image means uh, uh, blob image means uh, where some targeted areas are there there is some normal image and blob image is some targeted values are there that, that is much more clearer in terms of the computer because our computer don't understand that image that image need to be con completely converted to the numbers so for that representation the blob is there uh prashant uh, uh, we definitely need gpu if we are working on more images since i am working on one or two or one video or two video that doesn't require the gpu but if the size increase the requirement of gpu would be there and that uh, you can uh, uh, that you can get from the google collab also that is also free uh, google collab is giving some some amount of uh, gpu free you can uh, Uh, use that if you are learning and if you are not learning uh, to uh, on sage maker and other stuff wherever the company you are working in that would be provided from them so jonas i am directly using it step by step i am not saving the model i am just creating the network i am just passing my image there and i am just processing it feed forward i haven't saved it somewhere and get it from there i have written the code complete code here right so if if that is there you need to save it somewhere i am not doing that here so uh, johnson basically uh, i hope i am pronouncing your name correct but the thing is that uh, if if you have some uh, some predefined model the custom data set is also available here i am just showing you the code there what happens in custom data set there is complete uh, the value has been there one linkage path has been there and you can just pass your image where you want to work on and it would give you the result you don't have to go through all these code and other stuff out there and uh, the With that in that way you can work on that as well as transfer learning is also there you can just look into the transfer learning how transfer learning works so prashant image classification is uh, very basic right uh, this yolo has been doing your image classification uh, uh, adding to the localization also right so dinesh uh, only look once means you are just passing it model only once you are not passing it again and again you are just passing it once and the uh, the object probability and the class probability has been predicted at the same time only that's why it is known as you only look once francis it it can handle image classification definitely so dipika numpy has been used because your image cannot be passed at a whole that need to be converted in terms of numbers and in numbers you are converting it using the numpy uh, uh, numpy library and open cv because we used to open the image we used to fast the image that is very uh, frequently used library for handling the computer vision related stuff that's why we are using open cv out here 
so i have answered all the questions if you have any question feel free to put there i would be very happy to answer and if i am not able to answer feel free to ping me on my linkedin account i would be uh, sharing my response there also it's it's all my delight to just pass my knowledge or information to everyone hope i have i have make something useful of your sunday so what you can do afterward you can just look into some more implementation of yolo and try to implement that